Hello and welcome to Nitranya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Beres and in this video we're going to learn how to play Coffee Traders from Capstone Games. Now, the rulebook contains some areas which may be confusing or may need some clarification, but I have collected all the responses from the designers of the game up to this date and they're all included in this video. So, let's get started. To set the game up, start with placing the game board in the center of the play area. In each of these five trading houses, place three stock counters to this space based on the color of the trading house. And in a three player game, place one coin over here. In a four player game, place it in this space. And in a five player game, you would place it to this space. We will set up the game for a four player game. Shuffle these Arabica counters face down and in each space of this contract bonus track place the indicated number of counters face up. So in these two spaces you will place three counters face up, in these spaces only two counters. As indicated over here, in a four player game add one more counter to each stack and in a five player game you would add two more counters to each stack. You can return all the remaining tokens back into the box, they will not be used in the game. Each of these five areas on the game board represent one cooperative. In each cooperative, place six workers in this area called the town center. Place one animal counter in this space and the animal counter must match the color of the space and the color of the cooperative. And then place one wild animal counter in this space. Then take five different types of animal counters, not the wild counter, and randomly place one in each of these spaces with the six number in the coffee bars area. Then place one wild animal counter in each of these two orange spaces. Only in a four and a five player game, place these wild stock counters in this space and place four of them in a four player game and five of them in a five player game. Place the period marker on the year 1970 and the phase marker on the first phase. Shuffle one company disc from each player and place them randomly on the turn order track. Sort these milestone tiles by their letter and randomly choose one from each group and place them on their designated spaces in the milestones area. Each player then places one company discs of their color to the starting position of each line on this Arabica track. Each player also places one of their traders and one of their trucks near the Arabica track next to the game board. Finally, all players place one of their civet cats in this Sumatra cooperative. Then, on your player board, place three black cubes in this company cubes area. Only in a four player game, also take the cube of your color and place it in this area as well. Place the depicted plantations and farms on these spaces in the plantations area. For the moment, keep all the remaining plantations nearby. Place three coins and one donkey in the company supply area. Then place three additional coins, one trader and the remaining black cube in the bonus supply area. Place two workers in the worker pool and in a five player game you would only place one worker. Place three traders in the traders and contractors area and in a three player game you would place one additional trader. Then place all the buildings in their designated areas. These are four warehouses and again keep the fifth one nearby for the moment. Three production stations, three trade fair posts, and finally one hospital. Now place the fifth warehouse to this space. Take the six coffee cubes and place them on the zero space on each of the warehouse tracks. And take the last five remaining animal counters, shuffle them and randomly give one to each player who places it in this space next to this contract area. Also each player places one of their civet cats there and in a four and a five player game also one of the traders. 
sort all these contract tiles by their letter in the top left hand corner and give each player one random tile from each stack with letters A, B, C, D and E. Now the E tile also has the number, in this case it's E4. Each player then takes the F contract tile with the exact same number, so in this case it would be F4. Now make sure that each tile has the correct number of players shown in a bottom left hand corner. Then each player will get the starting coffee supply based on this F tile. Take two coffees of the first type shown on the tile, so here it's two green coffees, and one coffee of the other two remaining types on the tile. Place the trade counter in this space of the warehouse with this 4 to 1 ratio side up. Only in a 5 player game the color of the topmost type from the E tile allows you to move one space forward on the corresponding line on the Arabica track. And finally you will now distribute the remaining 3 plantations to the cooperatives based on the coffee types on this F tile. In the cooperative that matches the topmost coffee type from that F tile, in this case it's the green cooperative, place your plantation in the bottom row and in the center space of that bottom row. In the cooperative determined by the second color on the F tile, place the plantation in the rightmost space of that first row and when determining the rightmost or leftmost space always look at the name of the cooperative. So in this example rightmost is this space. Then the third plantation will be placed in the cooperative determined by the color of the third symbol on that F tile. This time it's going to be the leftmost space of that bottom row. Coffee Traders is played in three periods and each period has six phases. In the first phase, the work phase, players will place these cubes onto these action spaces and generally they will try to add these plantations to cooperatives and also place these workers onto those plantations so that they can harvest the coffee later in the round. In the second phase, players will place their own workers on their plantations in cooperatives. In the third phase they will use these traders and contractors to build buildings or to place those traders to these spaces in Antwerp and those traders placed over here will gain coffee harvested from these fields in the cooperative. Then the fourth phase is the actual harvest when players will gain more coffee. In the fifth phase players will be able to fulfill the contracts or deliver the coffee to these coffee bars which will score them points at the end of the game. The final sixth phase is the refresh phase, which is a cleanup phase and a preparation for the next round. The game ends at the end of the third period, at the end of the sixth phase, and players will score victory points mainly for their plantations and buildings they built in each cooperative. In addition, they will score victory points for most fulfilled orders in each coffee bar, they will gain victory points for the milestones, then for the advancement on each line of this Arabica track, for all the buildings built, for the fulfilled contracts and also for the advancement on this counter track, which I'm going to talk about later in the video. The player with the most points at the end of the game is the winner. In the first phase, the work phase, players take turns in this turn order starting with the first player. On your turn you have to place one of your action cubes from the company cubes area to one of these four action spaces and perform the corresponding action or you can pass. You can take the same action multiple times during the same phase. When you pass you may take no more actions in this first phase and when all players pass the first phase is over. With this first action you can add a plantation in one of the cooperatives. As this symbol indicates, place one action cube in this action space and then take the leftmost plantation from any of these rows and place it on an empty space in any cooperative. The level of the plantation, which is the number printed on it, must match the level of the row where you place that plantation. So the level 1 plantation can only be placed in the first and second row Level 2 can only be placed in the 2nd and the 3rd row and level 3 only in this 3rd row. 
You can place your plantations in any cooperative, but if you place it in a cooperative where you don't have any plantation, it must be the level 1 plantation and it must be placed in the first row. Now, with this first plantation, take one of the workers from your worker pool and place it in the town center of that cooperative. When you add any level 2 plantation, as this symbology indicates, you have to pay one coin from the company supply. And when you add any level 3 plantation, you have to pay two coins from the company supply to the general supply. If you don't have the coins, you may not add such a plantation. When adding the plantation to the second row, it must be linked to one of the plantations on the first row. To make the link, as indicated by this symbol, you have to add one donkey from your supply to this link. If you don't have the donkey, you may not add such a plantation. When creating these links, you may only place the donkey on an empty space, on empty link. If by any chance you would already have the donkey there, you don't have to add additional one, you simply place the plantation there. Furthermore, you may not place a donkey on the space which is already occupied by a donkey of another player. Now, each plantation in the first row can only be linked to one plantation in the second row. So in this example, you would not be allowed to place the second plantation in the second row like this, because the plantation in the first row would be linked to two plantations in the second row. That's not legal. However, this kind of placement would be legal, because this plantation is linked to this one, and this one is linked to the different one from the first row. Essentially, each plantation in the first row allows you to place one plantation in the second row, and they have to be linked by the donkey. And finally, when adding a plantation to the third row, you have two options. The first option is to use the same rules as for adding plantations to the second row, which means each plantation in the second row allows you to place one plantation in the third row, and they have to be linked. But this time, as indicated by this symbol, you need two donkeys. And again, you either have them in your company supply and place them on an empty link, or if you already have some donkeys there, if needed, add additional one. There are always two donkeys required there. The second option is to use the truck if you have it in your company supply. And with the truck, you don't even need a plantation in the second row. You can place that truck on a truck space next to any empty space in the third row, then place the plantation, but this link may not be occupied by any other player. If you have the plantation in the first row linked to a plantation in the second row, you can also choose any empty space in the third row. With the truck, it doesn't have to be directly connected to the plantation in that second row. In general, one plantation in the first row supports one plantation in the second row and one in the third row. So, to finalize the example, in this kind of situation you would be able to place the plantation in the second row here, because it would have the support from the plantation from the first row. When you build a plantation, if there's any bonus underneath that plantation, take that bonus immediately. In this example, it's one donkey that you can place directly into your company supply. If you get the worker, which is this symbol, place it in your worker pool. This is a symbol for a civet cat. That allows you to take one civet cat from the supply and place it in this Sumatra cooperative. And finally, this symbol, this double arrow, indicates that you can choose any of these Arabica tracks and advance your marker one space on the chosen line. Notice that when you build a plantation in the second row or the third row in any cooperative, you can also advance on the Arabica track, which corresponds to that cooperative. Now, when you build a plantation in the third row, in addition to the advancement on the Arabica track of the given color, you may also take one of these animal counters if they're still available. If you take the counter of the specific color, advance one space on the Arabica track of the same color, and if you take the wild animal counter, you can advance one space on any track. Since I have already briefly touched on this Arabica track, let me explain how it works. Every time you gain an animal counter or wild animal counter or Arabica counter or you get an advancement symbol, 
you may move one space on the corresponding track. If you have the wild counter, you can move on any of those tracks. During setup, we left one truck and one trader next to this Arabica tracks. And when you reach the second column on all those tracks, you can take that trader and add it to your traders and contractors. And when you reach this third column on each track, you gain the truck. Then when you reach the next column, you gain one coin. And this symbol means that all players who reach this space will gain one coin. However, only the first player to reach this column will gain one donkey. All subsequent players will not gain that bonus. Then again, multiple players can gain these six victory points at the end of the game if they reach this column. However, only one player can occupy this space with additional four victory points. And finally, when you reach the column with a coin or a donkey, you may not move back with that marker on that given line. But if you have not reached those columns yet, if you need to move back on that line, you have to move back. The same applies if you're in this victory point column, you can still move back from there. However, you may not move back from these two columns. When you collect these counters, those are the animal counters, Arabica counters, wild counters, and so on, not only you advance on the Arabica track, you also place these counters on the first available place on this counter track on your player board. And when you get a token which you already have on the track, place it on top so you have to group them. That also applies to these wild animal counters. Now, if you have two different counters of the same color, here is the animal counter and the Arabica counter of the green color, and you have two pieces of those counters you can take the two counters of the same color, but the different type, and use them to cover the next empty space. You would not be allowed to place any more counters on this space, but if you get any additional green Arabica counters, you would still place them on this space. You have to group them. However, you can also use the wild counter as the counter of the same color, so in this example, I can take this one green Arabica counter and the wild counter and cover up the next space. You may never use the last counter from the previous space because you would make the space empty. That's not allowed. Now, the reason for doing this is this number of victory points which you can gain at the end of the game and you gain the victory points equal to the last covered space. In this situation, it would be four victory points. When you build the last plantation from a row, you immediately unlock the farm. When you do, you may pay one coin from the company supply and place the farm in the cooperative of your choice. You will only place it on the spaces marked with this farm symbol. It's the same symbol which is printed on your player board. And when you place it on a space with this advancement symbol, you can immediately advance on the Arabica track of the same color. You have to make this placement immediately when you unlock the farm, so if you don't place it anywhere or if you don't want to pay the coin, you lose the farm and it's permanently removed from the game. And when you manage to build all your plantations, as this tiny symbology indicates, you gain one civet cat, which is again placed in the Sumatra Cooperative. With this second action, you send workers to harvest. Take one action cube and place it in this action space and choose any one cooperative and place one worker from the town center onto one plantation of each player in this cooperative. Each plantation can only hold one worker, so you can only place it on empty plantations. And if any player has more empty plantations in the cooperative, place the worker on the plantation in the lowest row. If you place the worker on the plantation of any other player with this action, advance one space on the Arabica track of the corresponding cooperative. When you take this action and there are not enough workers in the town center to place on one plantation of each player, you choose where you place that worker. Then, if at the end of this action the town center is empty, add one worker from the general supply to this town center. In order to take this third action, as these two symbols indicate, you have to place two cubes in this action space, and then you can breed a donkey. 
take one donkey from the general supply, so not from the company supply, and place it in any cooperative on the link above one of your plantations. In this example, you could also place it in one of these two spaces. Remember, you can only place donkeys on empty links, so in this situation, red player would block the purple player out from adding a plantation to the third row. And finally, to take this fourth action, again, you only need one action cube to place there. And then you have two options. You either add one civet cat to the Sumatra cooperative, or you gain two coins from the general supply into your company supply. In the second phase, players will place workers from their worker pool onto plantations in any cooperatives. First, all players may simultaneously place workers from their worker pool on their empty plantations and they have to start with the plantations in the first rows. If you still have any workers available, place them on your plantations in the second row, third row and so on. Then, in the turn order, if you still have any workers available, and obviously if all your plantations are already full, then you may place your workers on the plantations of other players. If you do, you may advance on the Arabica track of that color. If on the other hand you end up with any plantations without a worker, for each such plantation you have to pay the penalty. In the first period the penalty is one point, and you either have to pay one coin from your company's supply and pay to the general supply, or you move back on the corresponding Arabica track, in the second period, the penalty are two points, so you either have to pay two coins or move two spaces back on the corresponding Arabica track or combination, move one step back on the corresponding Arabica track and only pay one coin. In the third period, the penalty is three points and again, you may pay with any combination of coins and moving back on the corresponding Arabica track. If you are not able to pay that penalty, you have to remove that plantation and you have to start with the highest plantations first. The third phase is the trader and contractor phase. In this phase, players take turns in the turn order and on your turn, you may perform one of the three actions or you may pass. Unlike the first phase, if you pass in the third phase and other players don't pass, in your next turn, you can still take one of those actions. So only when all players pass consecutively, the third phase would be over. The first action is to place the trader in Antwerp. As this symbol indicates, if you take this action, you have to pay two coins from the company's supply, then take one of your traders and place it in the first space of any trading house in any cooperative. As a bonus, Take this stock counter and place it on your player board underneath the corresponding warehouse track. Other players in the turn order may now piggyback on this action. They may place one of their traders on the next available spot without paying the cost. If any player decides not to place the trader there, they may pass. The next player in the player order, if they place the trader, again they place it in the next available space. Now, in a three-player game, if first two spaces are occupied, the third player has the choice of either placing the trader in the third space or taking the coin. In four and a five-player game, the last player doesn't have an option, that player must take the coin. So in a four-player game, if first three spaces are occupied, the fourth player may not place the trader there, they must take the coin. It doesn't have to be the last player in the player order. If red player takes the action and green player as the next player in the player order decides not to place the trader there and the following two players do decide to place the trader there, the coin goes to the green player who passed. If, however, more than one player decides not to place the trader in the trading house, no one takes the coin. The second action is called hiring a contractor but in fact, you're going to build one of your buildings. To do that, you have to pay two coins from the company's supply and build one of the topmost buildings in any column. After that, 
replace the building with one of the contractors. When you build the warehouse, you may place it in one of these spaces or one of the spaces above the coffee tracks. When you place it to the right of the coffee tracks, you increase the storage for all coffee types by one. In this situation, the storage for all coffee types would be two. If you place it above one of the tracks, you increase the storage of that particular coffee type to maximum 10. When you build any other building, these are production buildings, these are trade fair buildings, and this is a hospital, place that building on the game board. You may place it in any cooperative, but only on the matching space. If you place it on the empty space with this symbol, you may advance on this Arabica track of this cooperative immediately. In order to build the hospital, at least one of the columns must be completely built already. You don't have to have two columns built, just one of them is sufficient. Every time you build a building and place the contractor in that space, gain the indicated bonuses. This symbol indicates one coffee of any type. This indicates that the trader token changes the ratio. This bonus gives you a civet cat. This one gives you a coin and this one allows you to move on the Arabica track of your choice. You don't have to award the victory points yet, you will score them at the end of the game. Similar to the first action, even when you build a building, other players may now piggyback on that action. Again, they do this in the player order and without paying the cost, without paying these two coins. However, this time there's a limitation. Players who piggyback on this action may only hire a contractor in the same area as the active player. So if the active player build the warehouse, other players may also only build a warehouse. And if you build a building in any cooperative, they may only build the buildings in the same cooperative, but the building type may be different. And finally, as this symbology indicates, the piggybacking players have to pay one coffee of any type to the player who took this action. That player obviously gains that coffee. If other players don't have any coffee to pay with, they may not piggyback. To take the third action, again you have to pay two coins from the company's supply, and then you can remove one of your traders permanently from the game. As a reward, you may move two steps on any Arabica track, or one step on one track and one step on another. There is no piggybacking on this action. The fourth phase is the harvest phase. You have to perform the following procedure in each cooperative. First, each plantation with a worker harvests two coffees. In a three-player game, each plantation would harvest three coffees. Now, each player with a fair tray building gains one coffee from this harvest. Only count the fair trade buildings, not any other buildings. Then the player who plays the first trader gains one coffee bean as the bonus. Only now take all the remaining coffees and starting with the first player and continuing to the second, third and so on, each trader will receive one coffee. If there are any coffees remaining, again, continue with the first trader, second and third, and repeat the process until there's no more coffee left or until each trader has five coffees. That doesn't include the bonus coffee for the first trader. Now each player will adjust the amount of coffee of that specific type. Red player gained one, two, three, four, five coffees. So the red player would adjust the track correspondingly. Note that this is collecting and harvesting the coffee, so for the moment you can exceed the current storage limits. And for the record, these coffee beans are not included in the game, I've used them just for the sake of explanation. Then after you perform the harvest in each cooperative, check for the bonuses. In a 4 and a 5 player game, if you have at least 4 coffees in each of the 5 cooperatives, gain a civet cat and place it in the Sumatra Cooperative. In a three-player game, you have to have six coffees of each type to gain that civet cat. Finally, as the last step of the harvest phase, each player gains one coffee from Sumatra for each civet cat in that area. So the red player would gain three coffees. Then return all the civet cats back to the general supply. 
The fifth phase is the contract phase. In this phase, players are taking turns in the reverse player order and they may either take an action or pass. When you pass, move your marker to the first available space in this bottom track and with that your fifth phase is over. When all players pass and move their markers to the bottom track, the fifth phase is over for everyone. On your turn, you have two options. You can either fulfill a contract or deliver to the coffee bars. To fulfill a contract, you have to deliver the indicated number of coffees from your storage to that contract tile. In this case, it would be two coffees from this sort, two coffees from this one, and two from this one. After fulfilling the contract, you can remove the tile from the game and immediately gain the bonuses below the tile and also the coin bonus which is between both tiles in each row. Here it would be one coin, here three and here four. Again, you will score the victory points at the end of the game and if you have two bonuses with a slash symbol, you can only choose one of them. This hammer symbol indicates that you can build a building without any coins or contractors and there's no piggybacking on it. When you gain a civet cat, you place it in the Sumatra area or if it's the third period, you place it in your company supply. And this is the symbol for hospital, which means you can build that hospital immediately without any requirements. After fulfilling the contract, take the top counter from this counter bonus area from the space with the same letter as the fulfilled contract, then advanced one space on the corresponding Arabica track. When you fulfill a horizontal pair of contracts, you can gain one of the bonuses on the right side of this contract area. When you gain the trader, add it to your traders and contractors area. When you gain a civet cat, place it in the Sumatra cooperative or in your company supplied if it's the third period. And when you gain a counter, advance one step on the corresponding Arabica track. The second option is to deliver the coffee to the coffee bars. Choose any empty space, place your company marker there and reduce the storage of that particular type of coffee by the indicated number. That means you delivered coffee to that coffee bar. Immediately gain the coins bonus from that space. Here it's one coin. In order to deliver the coffee to these orange spaces, you can only use the coffee from Sumatra. When delivering the coffee to these spaces, you have to deliver six coffees of the same type, but it can be any type you choose or you have available. Place your company marker on that space and gain the animal counter from there and advance one step on the corresponding Arabica track. Only in a four and a five player game, when you deliver at least once to each column, to each coffee bar, gain this wild stock counter. You can place it in any of these spaces below the warehouse tracks. When delivering coffee to coffee bars, there is one important limitation. After you make the first delivery, you have to make the second delivery immediately. If you don't, after that first delivery, you have to pass and your contract phase is over. During this fifth phase, the contract phase, anytime on your turn, you can perform the following three actions. When spending the coffee types, you can spend one coffee from Sumatra instead of one coffee of any other type. Essentially, the coffee from Sumatra acts as a wild type. In addition, you can trade one type of coffee for another type using your current trade value. So in this example, I can spend three coffees of one type to gain one coffee of another type. If needed, you can also purchase one coffee of any type. In the first and second period, the price for each coffee you buy this way is two coins. In the third period, it's three coins for each one coffee of any type, excluding the coffee from Sumatra. If you have enough money, you can purchase more than one coffee during the same turn. And finally, if you have, you may spend three different wild stock counters to immediately build one warehouse, which you can place on any legal space. Or if you spend five different stock counters, you may immediately build two warehouses. 
Before we move on to the final 6 phase of the round, I have to explain this small bonus supply area. It contains 3 items, the bonus action cube, the bonus trader and the bonus 3 coins. And each period you can use 2 out of these 3 items, it's also stated here. So if you want to take an additional action during the first phase, you can take the additional action cube and use it for an additional action you want to take. You can use the trader as the trader or as a contractor. And when you need coins, you must always take all 3 coins and move them from the bonus supply to the company supply area. As I said, you may only use 2 items out of 3. And if you want to take the third one, you have to make one other item available again. And therefore, anytime you gain a trader during a period, if you don't have a trader in the bonus supply area, you can place that trader in this space. Then you may take these 3 coins if needed. On the other hand, if you don't have the coins here and you need the trader, when you gain any coins during the period, and you have 3 coins in the company supply area, you can move those coins to the bonus supply area and with that you can free up the trader. This area on the game board contains 3 milestone tiles and anytime you fulfill a condition on one of those tiles, place your marker on the most valuable empty space and it remains there until the end of the game, even if you don't meet those requirements later in the game. Each player may only have one marker on each tile. The last phase in each period is the refresh phase. All the steps of this phase are printed on the game board. First, return all traders and contractors to their area on a player board. And if the trader space in the bonus supply area is empty, place one of the traders on that space. Then return all the action cubes to this company cubes area. And in a 4 player game, if you use the company cube of your color, that cube is now permanently removed from the game. Again, if you used a company cube from the bonus supply area, place one of the action cubes on that space. Then adjust the number of coffees in your warehouses based on the storage limits of those warehouses. However, before you do that, you can rearrange these warehouses in any way you want, including the starting warehouse if needed. Then, if you have any stock counters, for each stock counter, gain one coffee of the corresponding type. Since this happens after checking the storage limits, with these additional coffees, you can exceed those limits now. Then, you must refill those 3 coins in a bonus supply area with the coins from the company supply area, if you haven't done so already. If you wouldn't have enough coins available, for each missing coin you have to take one minus 3 victory points token. Then refill the coins from the general supply. Finally, move all the turn markers to the top row and refill the coin in each trading house. The game ends at the end of the third period, at the end of phase 6. After that, perform the final scoring. You can use this scoring pad to count all the scores. And we'll start with the quality value of each player in each cooperative. To calculate that quality value of each player in each cooperative, the level 1 plantations are worth 1 quality point, level 2 plantations are worth 2 points and level 3 plantations 3 quality points. So the red player here has 6 quality points from plantations. Note that those quality points are based on the level of the plantation, not on the level of the row. So the yellow player only has 2 plus 1 3 quality points. Then each building in a cooperative is worth 1 quality point, only the hospital is worth 2 quality points. However, to score these quality points from the buildings, you have to have at least one plantation in this cooperative. Then the player with the highest quality value in this cooperative will score 16 victory points, the player with the second highest value would score 8 victory points, and the third player would score 4 victory points, but only in a 4 and a 5 player game. In a 3 player game only the points for the first and second place are awarded. In case of a tie, add the values together, split them evenly and round up. So the red player has 6, 7, 8 quality points in this cooperative. 
2, 3, 4, 6 and 7 quality points for the green player. Then we have 2, 3, 4 quality points for the purple player and then 3 quality points for the yellow player. Then score additional victory points for the items in the company supply area and for your worker pool. Each donkey, civet cat and the worker is worth 1 victory point. Each truck is worth 3 victory points. Then for each negative 3 victory points token, subtract those points from your score. Add the victory points from the counter track. Score the number of victory points in the last covered space. In this example, it's 12 victory points. Then calculate the victory points for the Arabica tracks. These victory points are cumulative. So if you have all your tokens in this second column or further ahead, you get three victory points. If you have all the tokens in this third column or further ahead, you would score three plus seven victory points. Then if you reach this space on any given track, you score six victory points and only the first player to reach this space would score additional 4 victory points. So that's 10 victory points for red player here. Then score the victory points for all your milestones. And by the way, you can find their description in the rulebook. For each completed contract, score the victory points shown at the bottom of that contract. Add the victory points from all the buildings you have built during the game. And also these 4 victory points if you build this level 3 plantation. Add the victory points from each space from this coffee bar's delivery and then score the victory points for majorities of deliveries in each coffee bar and for the sake of explanation I'm only showing one column here. The player with the most markers, most deliveries in each column scores 4 victory points. The player in the second place scores 2 victory points. In case one or more players are tied for the first place, here we have 2 green and 2 red markers, the player with the marker which is closest to the bottom of the track wins that tie. Award these victory points for majorities for each column for each coffee bar. Then tally up all your scores and the player with the most victory points is the winner. So that's how you play Coffee Traders. If you would have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.